We've been talking about relating all of the different forms of energy to one definition, rearrangement of chemical or nuclear bonds into a more stable state. But then we come to a particularly difficult part of power, tidal power. So there are tides across the earth. If you sit on the dock on a sea and you wait six hours, you'll go from a low tide to a high tide. You have two of these per day. The most dramatic place to witness it is the Bay of Fundy. This is uh, Maine is down that way. This is Canada. This is in Nova Scotia on the Atlantic Ocean. And in this area, the tides are so high that way over here, this is the water at low tide. This entire flat plain all the way up to the hills you see here on the far right in this image, will get covered by water. It's actually a very amazing sight to behold. What happens is that the Earth is rotating, but basically the water always has a permanent bulge that heads towards the moon. And because of this, as the Earth rotates, you go between a high tide and a low tide. And you might think they should be every 12 hours apart but they're about every six, because the Earth is also pulled towards the moon, leaving a little bit of water bulging out from the direction opposite of the moon. So that's where the origin of tides come from. So it's due to the gravitational attraction of the moon, and tidal power can actually be very useful. There is a large place in France that actually captures the tide coming into a bay, and generates electricity very similar to a manner of hydroelectricity from it. But how does this all relate back to rearrangements of chemical or nuclear bonds? The moon? Let me show you. This is a really key chart. This is the binding energy of nucleons, of the nuclei. And you can see here at the top that the most stable state, the most stable is iron and nickel. It's very close to that as well. So these are the most stable elements. And you can rearrange the nuclei this way, and we call that fusion. This is what the sun does. The sun takes hydrogen down here and turns it into helium, which is more stable. And you can also have fission. This is breaking up uranium and having it go into more stable states as well. In the end, everything ends up as iron and nickel. So, if this is the case, how did we ever get these heavier elements in the first place? So what we need to do is go back to a really big explosion, the original explosion, the Big Bang. The Big Bang produced the lighter elements and had so much extra energy that even though it was energetically unfavorable, it was possible in time for reactions to occur that actually created the heavier elements, particularly in supernovas. In this process, so much energy is released that net we went downhill, we went to more stable states, but in the process the heavier elements were formed. Now, it's very clear that all of us and our Earth and our solar system are not original Big Bang products because we have those heavier elements present. And as our solar system formed, it had to form from pieces of some actual supernova remnants. Our solar system the sun and the planets, here shown to scale in terms of their individual size, but clearly not shown to scale in terms of their distance away, was formed by gravitational attraction of mostly hydrogen, which is what the sun's made out of, and it had all tiny bits of this heavier stuff. But just like in a centrifuge, as all of this mixes and pulls together and starts rotating, the heavier bits get spun out 
And if we look at an actual map looking down, again, the planets here are not the scale, but their orbits are, the heavier parts, the planets, the brocky bits, the things like you and me that have all these elements in them were spun out as these farther planets. And of course, some of the planets, like ours, has a moon. So how do we relate tidal power back to the Big Bang? Well, it was those recombinations into nuclear bonds that set the whole solar system in motion. That was the energy source, the fusion that took place to create the solar system in the first place. So actually before tidal friction will cause the moon to crash into the earth and go to, to uh, a different orbit, well before that the sun is going to run out of its hydrogen. And the sun will take the hydrogen, which is it's converting to helium, and once that reaction is mostly over and we're kind of empty, the helium will actually fuse into carbon and oxygen and nitrogen. And then there's another fusion cycle where those elements can fuse into the heaviest ones. In that process, the sun will engulf all of the inner planets. So that's the end of us. But it shows the steady progression of everything going to heavier elements, to the most stable elements, iron and nickel. That's what's at the center of the Earth. The center of the Earth is molten iron and nickel because it's the thing that's left over in the end. It's the most stable element that can be made through the process of fusion, of rearranging nuclear bonds. And it's not surprising that this iron and nickel is still very warm at the center of our Earth. It's molten. So there's another energy form that can relate to all of this, and that's geothermal energy. Here's a picture of the old faithful geyser. Water goes down into a cavern, and it's heated because there's not a volcano, but there's still very hot rock from the cooling of the Earth's core, and also from the radioactive elements that were produced in supernova that are now decaying and giving off heat. This heat boils the water, and on some relatively regular schedule, the water boils out and geysers up into the air. You could stick a power plant on that, capture it, and make steam and make electricity. Geothermal power. The more common form of geothermal power, like this picture from my house, is where you actually put pipes into the ground to keep the warmth from the earth to heat up water to a small degree. Actually, in this type of system where they're in a shallow trench, you're really just storing direct solar energy. But if you have one that goes much, much deeper, you actually are tapping into a little bit of that heat in the Earth's core from the molten iron and nickel, which is the most stable state of rearranging nuclear bonds. That's what you need to know about the definition of energy.